Good morning, Scott. Um, I believe I went over this in the first video. Um, it was in Global Mapper 17.2, um, but I do think I went over this. I hope I went over it in detail. Um, uh, drawing lines and also uh, ending lines and how snapping works. Um, I, I again, I, I haven't watched the video in a while. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I do believe that I went over that in the first video, but I'll go over it again really quickly and uh, hopefully this will clear up anything and then maybe also point you to the correct location in the video where I talk about it. I do realize that that's a long, ridiculous video, but at the same time, I think it's long in part because I go into detail of things, at least a little bit. Um, I may have glossed over um, what it takes to finish a line because it's pretty quick and simple. Um, but that's also the point where you start editing the attributes for the line in question. So uh, in Global Mapper, we'll come up and we'll go ahead and we'll create our line features. And we turn that on. And then once we turn that on, we'll see that actually snapping starts working on its own. So if you look at my cursor here, you can see where it's a crosshair with a dot in the center. And at the point that I start moving over to another existing line, we can see that it jumps off of that crosshair and snaps to the existing line. That is how you know you're actually closing the line. So at this point, if I click, sure enough, it snapped to the end of that uh, map extent line. And then we can go ahead and continue drawing by clicking points. And I'm doing this very coarsely. And we saw that it snapped to the um, uh, uh, dip, right, dip value right there. I bet I can get it to snap to the... Yeah. I'm not seeing the point for that, and I'm not sure why it's not snapping to that, but I can get it to snap to the point of the dip at the 5. Oh, that's KCD right there. The dip for 5 is right there. So that's snapping to KC, the point for KCD. That's snapping to the point for the 5-degree um, inclined bedding to the uh, south-southwest, um, the 4. So when you see it jump like that, that's how you know you're actually getting the snapping. Um, to end a line, I'm going to go ahead and click one more time, like we've closed a polygon. So when it jumps, now it's closed. I go ahead and click that vertex with the left click mouse button. Then we want to right click. This allows us to end a line. And here what we want to do is we can give it a name if we want. If you really want to name it something, you don't have to. Um, everything else should be handled as far as name goes in the um, attribute table. So first and foremost, we want to classify the line as what line type it is. And for arbitrary reasons, I'm just going to pick 01, 01, 01. Now, we want to put this into contacts and faults. So now we have set that that line be digitized as 01, 01, 01 in the contacts and faults shape file. And then all of our attributes down here are set for us because we predefined some of those based off of this 01, 01, 01 setting. Now, uh, if you wanted to give it a name, instead of naming it up here, we would want to name it here in the label feature. So we'd click on that, double click, and call it Bob's Contact. And now we've labeled that specific feature Bob's Contact. Um, once we say OK, now we've finished drawing that line. Now we can continue on digitizing other lines. So that's how we end a line. And that's how snapping works. We'll see it snap. We'll click our last vertice, we'll right click, and then by default now, because we predefined what those should be labeled, that's how they come in. So this will always be the last known entry. So 0101 in contacts and faults, and we want to name this one Scott's contact. Oops. Voila. And for that line now, this attribute is set. All of these are, but because we also specified something specific in a field that wasn't labeled, we can go ahead and then add an additional, we can modify the feature for it as well. That's the same with the notes as well. So here you could say, I saw this contact and am certain it is 01.01. .01.
0.01.01 or whatever. You can do some note taking with it. Um, this was on day 25 when I ran out of food and was ready to start eating the bark off of trees. Um, this was on day one when the beer was still flowing readily and I was able to map with gusto. Whatever you want to say here, that's what can go in the attribute value for notes. Those are your personal notes about that specific line. Um, and maybe I shouldn't say your personal notes. Your personal notes should actually go into um, stations point. Uh, what is that one called? I can't remember off the top of my head now. Um, one of the fee shape files that's um, – it's not generic samples. It's not Geochron. There's another point feature class that we can add in that will tie your notebook notes to um, point data, and it's station points or something like that. And I'm not sure why I'm – maybe it goes in generic sample, and then generic sample, we give it the correct feature to do so. Um, so – Instead of saying, I saw this contact and I'm certain it is 0101, that's probably a reasonable thing to state in notes. Um, but personal notes like this was day 25 and I camped five miles away. The people using your map probably don't care too much about that information, but that is your information to jog your memory about you know, your frame of mind so that when you're going back through your field notes, you can figure out, oh, why did I draw this this way? Oh, right. It is because I was out of water and dehydrated and I had a headache. So those types of things go into, I, I think it's station point or something like that. Um, but those are in your notebook. I mean, those we can get out of your notebook later on. Um, okay. So that takes care of those types of issues. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to Delete the other line as well. So that I don't get confused later on. The issue with the multiply, I have a sneaking suspicion that something isn't exactly like it should be. Um, and that may be, have been a, a byproduct of the last video. But let's go ahead and I'm going to add those things in really quick. Um, so that I can get it set up like it needs to be. I'm going to clear all. And you specifically stated the ortho image. So I'm going to start with that and get that added in. And then I'm also going to add in the topo base so we can see the multiply occurring over the DEM. I'm sorry for the delay in this, but it takes time to load these things up, as I'm sure you know. Images specifically, those other photos are actually pretty large files when it comes down to it. And let's add in one more. No, I don't want to abort the overlay. I do want to add in the topo base without shaded relief. I'm going to turn off woodlands so those green polys, uh, the green swatches don't show up. And that should be good for them. Okay, <clears throat> so if your image comes in like this, that's great. That's exactly what we want. If it came in black, black end, let's put it that way, um, we need to do some extra work to it. So uh, I'm going to do it based on a couple of different scenarios here uh, with what I suspect happened. Uh, so we'll go through it that way. Okay, so there's my topo base. And first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and move these things down to a more reasonable location. And, oh, now I don't know which is which because I did that haphazardly. Okay, sorry, give me a second. Let me do this so that I can see this. and adapt more readily to discussing. I know this takes time, but this will help me when I'm talking to you, making sure I'm doing the right things for you. Okay, so we want the ortho photo to be below. Okay, so topo base is on top of the ortho photo, and you may have to reverse the order of this, uh, the right click and reverse order of selected layers, so that this is the thing that's at the very top, this is the thing at the very bottom. By default, Global Mapper used to come in 
this way. So the thing in the top was the bottom, and the thing at the bottom was the top. Now, uh, it looks like they have remedied that because when I flipped that order, it sure worked that way. But it used to be that, you know, it, it would be really weird. This would be your bottom layer, but it'd be all the way up here. So just be wary of that. So now I've got the topo base on top of the ortho photo. And what I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm going to double click on topo and say multiply. At this point, then, we should see both of them together. And sure enough, it's a little hard to see because of the um, transparency and heaviness, the, the color similarity between the ortho photo and the topo. But sure enough, there it is. I mean, we can see that this says 7200, this is 7300. Sure enough, that's the information that we were looking for. We have the topo base over the ortho photo. Now, if at this point your ortho photo is black, likely what that means is that we have some color contrast adjustment issues here. Um, it may have come in linear. I don't remember exactly how I had you import it. Um, but what that does is that does a linear stretch on the ortho photo. And when you do the multiply, it should just work just fine. So then, because we want to see the DEM show up through the bottom of that, we're going to say multiply that as well. And then the textures from that DEM should come through, and it sure looks like they are. Let's actually um, move to a higher relief area. Doesn't look too bad, but I'm not seeing... Yeah, it's there. It's happening. So we can see it right here. So there is some issues with registration in some areas, like here, but other areas are perfect. I mean, this is probably actual, not... Um, this... What looks like ghosting of the DEM here is probably actual DEM values. Uh, as a byproduct of the ortho photo being taken at a different time that the DEM was created. Um, sorry for the stammer there, but I was trying to think of the right way to say that. Um, so those are the ways that that should show up if you do it that way. Now, I know if we do something like linear, I think, I can make that ortho photo. Well, it didn't do it there. There are ways that you can make that ortho photo go black, and it's usually a byproduct of ArcGIS. Um, and since we didn't mess with ArcGIS in this, um, it might be something else that happened. Um, you may have gone here and clicked on color intensity darker. That's one way. Click the default button, it'll set it right back. Um, I tend to actually make this lighter so that I can see the topo base and the... Um, ortho photo a little better. That's obviously too light on the ortho photo, but um, that gives you the idea. So that may be what happened. Um, I'm not entirely sure. And other than that, everything starts getting really gray as to what you, what else you possibly could have done. Um, if you do some of these averaging things here with uh, incorrect blend mode not being set to multiply, it could happen. But you did say multiply, so I, I'm suspecting that this is set correct. Um, you can resample if you want, but basically you can leave that alone as long as that's good enough for what you're doing. I mess with this later on for aesthetic reasons, not for science reasons. So, um, you may have set, no, nope, transparency wouldn't do it. I would look at my color intensity and then also at my RGB color balance because you can actually make this go, oh, which way? Uh, this way, yeah. You can actually make this go black by adjusting these that way. No, I made it go the other way. So you can do things like that. And then we see that the topo base, oh sorry, let me remove the... We can see that the, to the ortho photo did go black because our color adjustment is saying to you know, make the saturation of these be black effectively. And if we bring these back to the middle at 0% adjustment, that should then show up good again. 
and there it is. So I would look at these three values here and this value here. And if anything, you'll want to go lighter so that the topo base shows up sharper on the ortho photo. Um, other than that, maybe send me a screen capture of what these settings are and I can start taking a look at them. So somewhere in your machine, you should have this snipping tool. If you click here and type in S and I, then the snipping tool should pop up. When you click on it, it pulls up this little dialog box here. And then you draw a box over what you want to capture and it captures it. And then you can save it to your desktop and email that file to me. And then I can start taking a look at some of these things. So that's one quick way we can actually um, start sharing back and forth what your screen looks like, what your settings look like if we need further information. Um, thanks a lot, Scott. I can't think of anything else. And at some point I really do. I hope to go through and uh, make better videos than what I have presented to you. I'm doing these really quick and dirty without cutting them together or editing them or anything like that. So you get me yammering like I am right now. Um, but one of the things that I would like to do is, like I said, go back through, redo the videos so that they're a little bit more user friendly, a little less um, babbly for lack of a better word. Um, and hopefully that'll actually clean some of the timing up of it and it'll shorten the videos up and make them a little bit more user friendly to go back and watch. But again, I do think I went through this in more detail in the first video, and I'm sorry that it's not indexed to show you, uh, to be able to pan through different areas of what I'm doing, um, you know, where it states at uh, one minute and five seconds, Phil's doing this, it 30 minutes, Phil's doing this, um, but at least this should give you a little bit of a quick idea of what's happening and uh, in conjunction with the first video, a little bit more detail. Um, and this one at least is in Global Mapper 18, so at least we're using the same looking software now. Um, if you have any other questions, go ahead and email me. Um, if you're happy with how this functions, let me know and I'll get Tierra and Maria off to you in short order. It shouldn't take me too long at all. Thanks, Scott. Bye.